Tante Catrinette. It happened, just as everyone had predicted. Tante Catrinette was beside herself with rage and indignation when she learned that the town authorities had for some reason condemned her house and intended to demolish it. That house what Vumet give me his own self, at his own mouth, and when he give me my freedom, all rose down on regular before the court. Bon Dieu, Seigneur, what they talking about? Tante Catrinette stood in the doorway of her home, resting a gaunt black hand against the jam. In the other hand, she held a corn cob pipe. She was a tall, large boned woman of a pronounced Congo type. The house in question had been substantial enough in its time. It contained four rooms, the lower two of brick, the upper ones of adobe. A dilapidated gallery projected from the upper story and slanted over the narrow banquet to the peril of passers by. I don't think I ever heard why the property was given to you in the first place, Tante Catrinette, observed Lawyer Paxton who had stopped in passing, as so many others did, to talk the matter over with the old negress. The affair was attracting some attention in town, and its development was being watched with a good deal of interest. Tante Catrinette asked nothing better than to satisfy the lawyer's curiosity. Vous met all time, say Catrinette, what gold to him. The way I make them nigger walk, chalk. But, she continued, with recovered seriousness, when I nurse his little girl, which all the doctor allow is going to die, and I make it well, me, then Vumet, he can't do nothing. He named that little girl Catherine for me. That's Miss Kitty what marry Michel Raymond by Grand Echo. Then he give me my freedom, he got plenty slave, and one don't count in his pocket, and he give me that house what I'm standing in the door. He got plenty house and land him. Now they want pay me thousand dollar what I don't ask him for and turn me out that house. I'm waiting for him, Michel Buckstone. And a wicked gleam shot into the woman's small dusky eyes. I got my ex crying fine. First man will touch Catrinette for turn her out that house. He get his head bust like a bust a goat. That's nice day. Ain't he, Michel Paxton? Fine weather for drama clothes. Upon the gallery above hung an array of shirts which gleamed white in the sunshine and flapped in the rippling breeze. The spectacle of Tante Catrinette defying the authorities was one which offered much diversion to the children of the neighborhood. They played numberless pranks at her expense daily serving upon her fictitious notices purporting to be the last degree official. One youngster, in a moment of inspiration, composed a couplet which they recited, sang, shouted at all hours beneath her windows. Tante Catrinette, she go in town. When she come back, her house pulled down. So ran the production. She heard it many times during the day, but, far from offending her, she accepted it as a warning, a prediction as it were, and she took heed not to offer to fate the conditions for its fulfillment. She no longer quitted her house even for a moment. So great was her fear and so firm her belief that the town authorities were lying in wait to possess themselves of it. She would not cross the street to visit a neighbor. She waylaid passers-by and pressed them into service to do her errands and small shopping. She grew distrustful and suspicious, ever on the alert to send a plot in the most innocent endeavor to induce her to leave the house. One morning, as Tante Catrinette was hanging out her latest batch of washing, Uzeb, a free mulatto from Red River, stopped his pony beneath her gallery. Hey, Tante Catrinette, he called up to her. She turned to the railing just as she was, in her bare arms and neck that gleamed ebony-like against the unbleached cotton of her chemise. A coarse skirt was fastened about her waist, and a string of many-colored beads knotted around her throat. She held her smoking pipe between her yellow teeth. How you all come on, Michel Uzeb? she questioned pleasantly. We all middle in town, Catrinette. But Miss Kitty, she put it bad off out, Yana. I see Mr. Raymond this morning when I pass by his house. 
He said, look like the fever don't want to quit her. She been asking for you all to the night. He low, he reckon I better tell you. Nice weather we got for planting, Tant Catronette. Nice weather for lies, Monsieur Uzeb. And she spat contemptuously down upon the banquet. She turned away without noticing the man further and proceeded to hang one of Lawyer Paxton's fine linen shirts upon the line.